It's a very interesting story. For me, it was something that was kind of like premeditated. My mom tells me I could draw before I could express myself. In high school, me and a friend of mine had taken up an art club. And through that club, we were able to enter work into competitions. And uh, whatever it came to design and graphic design would be the guys uh, scooping all awards. We caught the ear of someone who was basically uh, teaching in Kenya High. And he was a renowned art teacher. And he actually came seeking for us because I think he felt he needed a bit of inspiration working with this team of young guys who are very good at what they're doing but without guidance. And after I left school, he's the same person who inspired me to go to art school. He had a brother who was in the advertising industry. So while I was in art school, I was able to now get a, an internship. At that point, I don't think a lot of people actually knew that there was this thing called advertising. And by then, the creative industry was kind of like relatively unknown. So I go to Leo Burnett and I get as creative director. And he told me, yeah, I would, I would not mind having someone like you on board to, you know, grow up uh, and come up uh, under me because advertising is mostly apprenticeship. The beauty of, of, of Leo Burnett those days when you're setting out was the fact that we had so many creative directors come in and go and most of them were expatriates, very, very brilliant expatriates. There's one of the creative directors who came in and told me, I've looked at your work and I can see you can draw, you can paint, tie it upside down with one hand behind your back and you still deliver. <laughs> but you're more of a thinker than a drawer. And he pushed me into the direction of a direction, which is very conceptual, and I found myself. And I remember the first ever ad I can remember working on that was something where I felt like, I don't know, I click and know what it is I'm doing, was a Witabix commercial. And by then the platform of Witabix was Superbix. Having been in an agency where we didn't have a lot of teams, He'd basically do a lot of the thinking, a lot of the working, a lot of the, you know, craft. And at this point, I remember he's, uh, he's very swamped up by work. And he comes to me and gives me a brief and tells me, uh, try and figure out. Uh, Witterbeaks was changing their packaging. And I go and I sit in my small corner. And I think I come back to him about half an hour later. I've scammed something. And I think he looks at it and thinks, you can't have done it that quickly. So I give him my scamp and he puts it aside and you forget about it. Three weeks later, he comes looking for me. I'm like, David, I gave you an assignment. Did you ever do it? And the scamp was basically a telephone booth <laughs> with uh, a box of Witterbix flying out. And it has shed its old, uh, old, old kind of like skin, the way Superman used to change from a booth because it was super big. And that is one of the ads I kind of like recollect being the defining moment uh, of my career. After that, I started now growing as in understanding how conceptual they work. I'm there for about three years and then all the calls and they're like, they're looking for an art director. Ogilvy was this space that was basically oozing with creativity and I have to give it to some of the guys I work with because you're told iron sharpens iron and some of the people I find there who are very, very good are there, Kina Eric, guys like Jonathan Quill, as in they push you to that other level where it was all about awards, award-winning work. I remember the first day I landed there, uh, the traffic person comes to me and they have a list of, of, of accounts. At some point I got Coca-Cola, a portion if I was working on Fanta, which was something I really loved because um, Fanta gave me an opportunity to work on Chaguo Latinis. And, and if I was to talk about actually a piece of work that I really liked, uh, not just because of creativity, but for impact, was the Fanta Chaguo Latinis campaign. And uh, Chago Latinis is basically uh, used to be held every year. And what they do is that they give the young guys a chance to vote for their favorite musician or favorite entertainer. So they come and they give me an opportunity. They tell me, you know what, David, we need to do posters for this thing. I came up with the posters that had celebrities. And that's the first time they're doing it. So I think I put uh, Nazizi on it. I put, uh, I think, Nameless on it. We do a nice, like, ripped effect on the poster. The other posters are approved and they're printed. And I remember having a meeting with the team from Cook the following, I think, a few days later, and they were kind of like a bit distraught because all the posters they put up had been pulled down. So the beauty of that was we quickly went back and printed more. And also the others that we printed were all stolen <laughs> by these young guys. Yeah. So even the following year, that became a trend. Guys were basically waiting for that calendar event and the posters. And it became a, a thing. And I think that is one of the things where 
the effectiveness of communication now for me is started becoming something. It's not just about having a good idea. It's about an idea being good enough for people to take and keep and own and make it their own. After that, get another call and I now end up in uh, Young and Rubicam. There's a gentleman who's a renowned creative called Kilimo. So we linked up and actually we hit it off from the get-go and I was there for about seven years maybe. Apart from working with the Kenyan creative director, I worked with a very strong strategic team and Chris Harrison had cut out a niche, basically a business where it was called the brand business. And by being in that space, I started thinking strategically and understanding more how work basically is developed. How far do you go? What insights do you seek? How will it affect the person I'm talking to? Because it's good to have a good advert, but it's better to have a good advert that is effective. What Ogilvy did to make me a, an art director or a, or a creative guy, this other one made me a, a holistic advertising man because then I understood both sides of the divide very, very well. What happens is uh, sometimes in a big agency, you can hit the ceiling, the glass ceiling. I needed to step out of the art director shoes into a creative director position where I would actually now see a broader view. And the place that offered me that was now Shakele. I, I was a young creative director and it basically meant now I had to learn new things and grow new things, which was quite something for me. Although it was a startup, we again had to learn a lot of things where you came from a point where there's only someone to do the job, you had to do multiple roles yourself. So I, it kind of like also built my stamina, it can also built me in other areas. Really that's at the same time uh, lorries were coming back, that's the same time the African sun was happening and uh, Ashakele actually got a Grand Prix during the African Sun Awards. Really that was for a co bank commercial and after that now I kind of like transitioned to uh, Transcend Media Group. Now I come into, uh, into, into this new agency where we have a lot of young guys and it's a very vibrant environment. And I tell guys I feel like I've gone back to advertising now because you actually become more of a mentorship position. You are this big brother who can be actually be the shoulder for guys to talk to, you know. Is there's an issue beyond the work, there's an issue beyond, the, you know, the brief. You have to basically be the guy who is the cheerleader and coach together. So you become that buffer. You're almost like a, a diplomat. Again, you always learn something. I tell other people, as a, as a creative, as an admin, you always keep learning and you keep learning how to do things differently.